microphone will be handy. Oh, I've got one now. Good. Um, I'm Ian Phillips from ARM, but I'm not talking about ARM at all. I'm talking about uh, the two-year update on ESCO, uh, the economic data. Um, so it's fairly boring stuff. It's accountancy, but I'll zoom through it because I think you'll find some of the figures are quite interesting. Um, just as a reminder, we've got to be a bit numeric about this. The original report was produced in June 13, and the, uh, there were five appendices, or six appendices, I forget, one of which was the economic footprint of the UK electronic systems community. And to remind you, the electronic systems community is all of you guys. So it's the electronics people and the embedded software people and the manufacturing people uh, and the research communities. It's everybody who's involved in electronic systems, their creation, their use, their manufacturing, their sale, uh, their installation and their maintenance. Uh, and we came up with some, some pretty impressive figures because this is a community which in general has never been heard of. Uh, but the point I particularly want to make on this one is that the data was based on information which was essentially 5th of July 2012, so a year earlier. So when I talk about a two-year update, I'm talking about two years from that point. So a reminder then of what the original report said. It found that this invisible community had 850,000 people in it in the UK working here. Staggering number that we were already producing 80 billion pounds of economic contribution to the UK, which was equivalent to 5.4% of the economy. That's one of the biggest sectors in the, uh, in the economy, and yet it's invisible. Nobody knew we were here. So they think that that would be a pretty impressive thing to start with, and that having uh, revealed the existence of this community and its importance to the economy, that we would have attracted an awful lot of attention in the meantime. Well, time by passes by and it appears we don't. Um, nevertheless, the, uh, the, the committee who was managing this group at the, uh, at the time felt it was important that we should put some ambition into the statement. So not only are we quite surprisingly big, but we're also going places. And the intention was that by 2020 we, there will be a million people in this sector contributing 120 billion, which will be 7.1% of the economy. So I'm going to cut to the chase because you want to know what the answer are, not what the history is, okay? So, two-year update then. So, it's uh, 5th of July 2012 to the 29th of August 14. So, that's pretty well exactly two years. Uh, just have to be precise on these points because people are going to question them. And it shows that the employment, after two years, had grown to in excess of a million already. Uh, the UK economic contribution on the same basis was calculated at 100 million, which is 5.8% of the economy. We were going up quite impressively. If you extrapolate those two points, and we all know the danger of extrapolation of a limited number of points, but if you linearly extrapolate those, those two points, then we were on track for pretty well doubling the original uh, employment to 1.7 million by 2020, um, and uh, on track for ex exceeding doubling of the economic contribution. And I think that that uh, is something which is a, uh, a point, if you like, of illustration of the value of this community, of the success of this community, because it's doing this despite the fact that it's not specifically being helped to do it. So ESCO highlights some deltas then. Some, uh, this is fairly uh, dry stuff, but the employment in this sector grew by 154,000. That's 18%. 10% of the growth that happened in the UK employment altogether during that, those two years. So the UK employment grew by 1.6 million, and 10% of that growth came from this sector. We do a, a round of applause, I think, at that point. 15,000 more enterprises were created. So that number went up hugely by nearly 40%. 86% of these were actually quite small. Now, we shouldn't be too surprised about this, because when we look at the, the spread of the... Uh, of the electronic systems community in the UK, then we find a large percentage of them are SMEs. So not surprisingly then, the 86% uh, of these were in the less than 10 size and they only created 22,000 jobs. But this is a growth community. So these are people who have got ideas, they've created SMEs to exploit those ideas. So this is people with intent to grow. The 250 size uh, enterprises and bigger, the number of them fell by 10%, which is a concern, 
but actually the group itself grew by 170,000 employees which is 40% growth so that's good but it is actually an illustration of what Malcolm was saying about consolidation I think that we're seeing bigger companies joining up and actually producing fewer bigger companies but nevertheless the overall product is successful so maybe this is successful consolidation as opposed to the other variety that Malcolm seemed to favor <coughs> There was a 20% growth in mid-size enterprises, which are the 10 to 250, but a reduction of the sector employment. Um, some grounds for being a little bit concerned about that, but it, what it means is that some of the SMEs are likely to have grown uh, and they've become mid-size. That some of the uh, mid-size companies have been acquired, which reduces their overall number. It might mean there is a tendency here to produce a bimodal uh, structure to the employment with a lot of people employed in small companies and a lot of people employed in big companies and tending to, to form a channel in the middle. <coughs> the wage bill grew by 21% during that time, two years, 21%. Sounds pretty good, but actually is moderated by the fact that the employment in that sector grew by 18% as well. So if you, you've got to take that out. It nevertheless produced an average wage growth of 2.5%, uh, 1.25% per year, which at the time of peak austerity, when a lot of people weren't getting any wage growth at all, then actually shows that the sector was doing pretty good. So the ES community then, as a summary, forget the, the deltas for a moment, these are the numbers. The employment in excess of a million, 3.2.8% of the working population of the UK. We are significant. The GDP contribution at 98 billion or 5.7.6% is pretty good. And overtly ES enterprises at 45,000, which are 88% of the enterprises are less than 10 people big, but 56% of them are in the 250 size. I need to look at this a little bit carefully. Only 3% of the businesses are greater than 550 people only 0.6% are greater than 250 people. It sounds very small, but these are 0.6% of 45,000. So there are two, roughly 250 businesses which are greater than 250 people size, and 50%, in excess of 50% of the employment in the sector is in those businesses. Now over 50% means that 50% of it is employed in the small businesses as well. So we mustn't underestimate the smaller businesses because they cumulatively are just as valuable. The average ES wage was 42,000 which is one and a half times the national average. And the confidence in these figures is high. I emphasize this because there's so much positive news in all of that then we have to question just how accurate the figures are. Well, I emphasize that the spreadsheets behind these are, are available from me or from the ESCO or from uh, NMI. Um, the spreadsheet is open. Everybody can see the calculations which are done in it. And the spreadsheet is exactly the same, that was one that was used in 2012 as in 2014. The only differences are where the figures have been, um, more accurate figures have become available or figures have moved on. And in particular, the strongest influence on these figures was two fairly indisputable um, uh, results which came out of BIS uh, and from the FAME and IDBR databases. The FAME database is a, um, a global commercial database registered all of the, com all of the companies in the world uh, including the major characteristics of their last reports. The main thing that that did was enable us to identify the electronic systems businesses the second one, however, the IDBR database, is a, an internal government database and contains information about, uh, from HM tax and revenue. And that, in particular, allows us to correlate the business identity numbers with the people who actually submit tax returns to those businesses. That's a very powerful tool, actually, because it means that with this we can identify exactly how many people in the UK work for a business which is registered here. Whether that's a main business or a satellite business, it doesn't matter. Now we can't identify the individuals because that's confidential information and doesn't come out of the government sources, but we can get the consolidated information. Uh, we've got that through, uh, thanks to the work of BIS in this, but actually uh, I think in the future we're probably going to have to rely on paying for the services of um, uh, ONS who do apparently offer the facility to do such things. 
So, in conclusions then, the ESCO 2020 ambitions are already exceeded for employment and will soon be so for the other things. There's almost no doubt about that. The 2020 milestones are all sufficiently close or already there that we will be exceeding them. 5% of the economy in 2014, 10% of the employment. And an interesting point here, because of the lift between employment and the economic contribution, that means that we can expect around 20% of the growth of the economy that occurred during that period of time is from this sector. So it's not just a case of employing heads. These are high quality heads and they contribute highly. Significant increases in the number of startups is an investment for the future. Large businesses, employ, in, employment growth suggests a positive market experience during this difficult economic time. And that's an interesting point. It was supposedly difficult and yet the businesses here are doing positive things um, so we mustn't, we mustn't assume that difficult has meant difficult for everybody. The UK's electronic systems community is healthy and continues to thrive despite the economic woes then. But I'm sad to say I don't really feel that we are any more valued than we were before. In which case, I will stop. Thank you very much. I will take any questions if there is any time.